Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. The transport bar is something that pretty much any Studio One user is aware of because that's where you find super important functions such as play, stop, record on off and so forth. But because it's part of such a basic feature set, maybe that's also the reason that you're not digging deeper into it to see what else it has to offer. Uh, because if you do that, you'll find that it's amazingly powerful and really comes with some hidden treasures. Here are some of my absolute favorites that I want to show you today. The first feature on my list of amazing transport bar functions is the performance monitor. You find the performance monitor down here where you see the current CPU core load. And um, if you click on it, which is something that most users aren't aware of that you can click on this, this is a direct shortcut to the dropper protection, which is something you might have to adjust quite a lot in Studio One, depending on how many plugins you're using, how many tracks you need to monitor with low latency. And it's just so much faster to adjust your dropper protection right from here to medium, high or maximum as soon as you hear audible crackles, clicks and pops during your playback, rather than having to go all the way to the Studio One preferences and then to all your devices, then to dropper protection to adjust it. Uh, so this is just a super handy shortcut in a way. The performance monitor also offers a complete list of all the plugins used in your song. You can see that when you tick the box for show devices here. And what's even better is that you can sort them by their current CPU usage. So when you hit play, you immediately get to spot the plugins that are using up the most CPU in your song. And then you could go ahead, locate those in the track list and simply transform them, for instance, in other DAWs that's called freezing to get that capacity of your CPU performance back. You also get a tick box here that allows you to enable or disable all of the plugins in your song. And you can also use that as a diagnostic method to see which one is causing all the CPU spikes that you're seeing. Further to the right, you also get a latency tab. This is great to get an overview of the total plugin latency that you see down here. And there's just so many other useful things. The plugin nap is something that's amazing, has been added in version 5.5. This allows you to simply switch off all the plugins that are not currently processing any audio. And this can also, once again, significantly reduce your CPU load. You also find some information about the cache here, like how many megabytes or gigabytes are being taken up by real-time tasks such as time stretching, transposing and so forth. And if you want to empty that to free up some space and declutter the song session, then you can simply click on this wrench icon here and clean up cache. So you can see the performance monitor really offers a couple of handy tools to get your performance issues under control quickly. Another really cool diagnostic tool hidden in the transport bar that might be very interesting to anybody working with actual MIDI connections is the MIDI monitor. You can open that up by simply clicking on this MIDI icon here. You might not be aware that you can actually click this and that way you get a MIDI filter that helps you detect any kind of MIDI activity that goes in and out of Studio One. So if you have some connectivity issues or you're not even sure if there's MIDI arriving in Studio One in the first place, just check the MIDI monitor with a single click on this MIDI icon here. Then we move on to the panel where you see the well familiar stop, play, record and loop buttons. But did you know that you can actually right click this area? Yes, that's right. And this actually brings up three very handy additional navigation functions such as return to start on stop. When this is not active, then your playhead cursor here will always stop and resume at the current position. So. Let's say I hit stop at around bar five. Now it also continues from bar five when I hit play again. But when I right click once more here on the transport bar and then select return to start on stop, what actually happens is that it will always return to the original play location. So let's say that's maybe here at bar three. Even though I'm stopping again at bar five, it jumps back to bar three. And depending on what you're doing, this can be an incredibly useful function. Now, if you require even more of this kind of functionality, you should definitely also try out the play start marker, which you can enable here. And this gives you this little green triangle that you can move around. And as long as that's active, Studio One will always start from the same position. It doesn't matter where your play at cursor is currently located. So even if I'm going to bar 15, as long as the play start cursor is here, this marker, I'm always jumping back to bar four. 
Why would you want that, you ask? Well, that can be extremely useful, for instance, when you're comping vocals, you know, multiple takes and you need to hear a section over and over and over again, then you really need to, yeah, just start always from the same position and the play stop marker helps you achieve that. The final option that you see here is called loop follow selection. When you right click the transport bar and this basically sets the loop range immediately on your current event selection can also be an incredibly handy tool. And it's just great that you can toggle this on and off so quickly with a right click. There's also some quite sophisticated record options hidden in the transport bar. Let's take a look. You can open them up when you click on this gear wheel icon here. It's called the record panel. And inside of this, you can switch the record mode from the default, which is overdubbed to replace. The difference being that, like for example, here on this choir, if replace is active and I hit record, I'm actually overriding what's currently there. Like as soon as I hit stop, you can see that these notes that were previously there simply disappeared. And if I want to go back to the classic overdub behavior, simply untoggle this again, and now I can just record notes on top of the already existing ones. Inside of the record panel here in the transport bar, you also find the buttons that are integral to take and layer recording. And if you're interested in that, I have an entire video dedicated to takes and layers and comping for MIDI and also for audio. I'm going to link you both right here. I also want to mention the note repeat, which is super fun and also hidden in the record panel here. You can activate that with a left click, also with a keyboard shortcut, of course. And um, this will essentially repeat the note that you're currently holding down at a rate that you can set either with the grid, like in this setting, it would always follow your current quantization that you can set up here. Or you can also change the repeat rate with yet another MIDI controller and that can get really creative, of course. So just to demonstrate the bass would sound just like that without the note repeat. And as soon as I activate it, then I start repeating the actual notes. Uh, can be super fun to toy around with. That's where the note repeat is hidden in case you were wondering. Did you know that you can tap your tempo in Studio One using nothing but your mouse? Once again, we're going to utilize the transport bar for this. Here where it says the song BPM in the tempo field, you can simply click with your mouse to define a new tempo. So if I'm thinking like, bam, dum, 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 then Studio One tells me immediately that the musical interval that I clicked with these four mouse clicks here is 117 BPM and yeah, then I can just go ahead and keep working at this song tempo, just like that. So did you know all of these transport bar features yet? Then you are truly a power user. Hopefully I can show you something new, at least with this last little tip here. This is something that I also didn't know about for many, many years. This is the master bus panel right here. You might know that this indicates the current level of your master bus, but it's much more than that. For example, this is a shortcut to adjust the main volume very quickly can be super handy. And you can also click here to toggle between stereo and mono to quickly make sure that your song is still mono compatible if you did a lot of stereo widening and panning. And we hear it all with our newly tapped tempo of 117. That's actually also a vibe. So yeah, this can be really useful. And the last little thing I wanted to show you is you can even drag and drop plugin effects directly onto this meter here and this will add them to the main bus. So right now I don't have a limiter on my main out and if I want to have that and let's say I don't have the mixer open currently, could just drag and drop it from the browser directly here onto this transport bar main out field. And this just added a limiter to my master bus. I mean this is not super useful perhaps but it's kind of kind of gimmicky and you can impress your friends and family by knowing that. So I hope you enjoyed exploring and discovering the hidden gems of the transport bar with me. And with that, thank you for watching.